Okay, next up uh, we look at uh, extreme weather events and socioeconomic impacts from the United in Science uh, WMO report from 2022. Uh, we have talked about extreme weather events uh, in many of the podcasts in a couple of different courses already. Uh, it's still good to touch upon this as a progress report from WMO especially because WMO, weather, World Weather Research Program, is very heavily involved uh, in this part and the next podcast where we will look at the early warning systems which are critical. Uh, so when you think about mitigation and adaptation, typically you think of long term. So mitigation is reducing our impact uh, by reducing emissions and other uh, activities like emissions from agriculture and so on uh, but also adaptation which means uh, trying to manage what is unavoidable by having to deal with uh, floods droughts heat waves wildfires sea level rise and so on uh, but the other part of the adaptation is uh, making short-term decisions in terms of let's say disaster management uh, so that's where the early warning systems come in, as we will see in the next podcast. For now, the key messages from the WMO report are uh, the number of weather, uh, climate and water related disasters has increased by a factor of five over the past 50 years, causing on average US 202 million in losses daily. Okay. Of course, where this is happening matters a lot because if there are regions which are not being affected, it may not be hard to convince those people and those governments uh, about what's happening with climate change. For example, if US and Europe, the rich countries, were convinced that they are somewhat immune from climate impacts, uh, last few years, especially the summer, spring and summer of 2022, have uh, removed those doubts with all the tremendous heat waves and uh, droughts uh, that are creating really unimaginable problems even for rich countries especially compounded by the Russian invasion of Ukraine right extreme weather events cause long-lasting socio-economic impacts especially in the most vulnerable communities which are often the least equipped to respond recover and adapt so you you would think this only applies to uh, developing countries and poor countries but actually even within a rich country uh, like the US there are there is a steep gradient of vulnerable communities and communities that are uh, not so vulnerable for a heat wave for example even within a city like Chicago or Philadelphia or LA uh, there are some neighborhoods which would be much more vulnerable and pay a heavier price uh, than others uh, and even when there is a hurricane which community suffers most depends on their vulnerability uh, how which depends of course on per capita income education employment uh, housing uh, they live in and the access to uh, hospitals uh, infrastructure to protect them and so on and so forth. In 2022 uh Human-caused climate change further contributed to significant economic and human losses associated with heavy rainfall and extreme heat events around the globe. So this report just came out already the summer uh, uh, of 2022 has been uh, record-breaking uh, pretty much across the planet and that has been included in this report already. So this is a bit of a complicated diagram which shows heat waves over region uh, southwest so 10 west to 15 east and 36 north to 45 north for 1950 to uh, 2022 okay um, so we are looking at average anomalies in degree Kelvin I don't know why they went to degree Kelvin but it's anomaly so you can also think of it in other units and duration so you when it comes to heat waves in southwestern Europe uh, or anywhere you want to, or even for rainfall and so on you want to think about uh, duration intensity of the heat wave and the area covered and frequencies how often do they occur and how the frequency itself is changing in addition to duration and intensity of uh, the heat waves and 
the area covered. So this includes Portugal, Spain, southern France and eastern Italy from 1950 to 21st July 2022, so up to when the report was getting written. Uh, in dependency of the duration on the x-axis and intensity average anomaly on the y-axis, uh, the size of the bubbles, the radius, show the spatial extension of the heat waves. So duration, frequency and intensity are changing and area covered is changing. Annotations indicate their starting and ending dates. Bubble colors highlight the year of occurrences. Blue is for 22, green most recent before 22, most recent before 2022. And 21st century, orange is 20th century, so you are comparing uh, the past. So this is historic record, so it's not projections, that's good to remember. So you have the colors here, 1950 to 2000 in this yellowish color, more orangish color is more recently in the 21st century, and this is recent before 2022, and these are the dates given here. So average area, ranking of cumulative anom anomaly, uh, top 15 plus uh, uh, in 2022 here. Okay, I won't go through the details because it's a bit complicated, but you can see that the duration uh, has increased for let's say these in the last uh, few years. So this one uh, happened uh, between uh, January, sorry, August 8th to 14th August in 2003, Europe, which killed, I think, more than 75,000 people and was a very rude awake call of uh, alarm for Europe, which didn't expect that they were so vulnerable. There are other ones, so you can go one, second one here. Uh, this is the top 15 plus, uh, just happened in 2022. <coughs> so in June, uh, there is the third one somewhere here in 1981, uh, fourth one here in 2001, but this also happened in 2003 and 2019. You can see the similar color and bubble size. Uh, so so on. So different ranking, rankings up to 13 here, uh, which happened in 2021 in terms of duration and uh, average anomaly here. And this one is a monster up here in terms of combination of duration and anomaly uh, happened in 1965. So this is high, high in duration but somewhat low in average anomaly. But it doesn't matter, it depends on how vulnerable you are. So the point is that uh, there have been m m monstrous heat waves in the past over this southwestern Europe, but what climate change does is the so-called lowering of the dice. So the frequency of some of these events increase, so the same numbers get thrown more often if the load is, if the dice is loaded, so that you, pref you preferentially choose one number to show up more often. So that's what climate change does. It loads the dice, okay? So the IPCC headlines for the heat waves uh, or extreme events and socioeconomic impacts. Human-induced climate change is already affecting many weather and climate extremes in every region around the globe. Evidence of observed changes in extremes such as heat waves, heavy precipitation, droughts and tropical cyclones and in particular their attribution to human influence has strengthened since the IPCC fifth assessment report. With further global warming, every region is projected to experience increasing concurrent and multiple changes in climatic impact drivers. Okay, Overall adverse economic impacts attributable to climate change, including slow onset and extreme weather events, have been increasingly identified, but this is said with medium confidence by Working Group 2 in the AR6 report. Okay, So overall adverse economic impacts attributable to climate change, including slow onset and extreme weather events, have been increasingly identified. So here is where you can think of the precautionary principle that based on the uh, historic records of extreme events and impacts, we can see the changes in duration, intensity, frequency and area coverage of the extreme events. For example, 
the floods have not only gotten extreme event, extreme rainfall and floods have not only increased in frequency in India, but they have become much more widespread, uh, tens of thousands of square kilometers, like the flood that uh, drowned the entire Pakistan uh, uh, as a country and uh, also the uh, heat wave that happened in March spring and summer of this 2022 over Pakistan and India lasted for a long time started very early and spread very widely all the way down into peninsular India as well which was a combination of Arctic warming global warming La Nina setting up the pressure pattern to spread the event and so on and so forth. So global warming is always going to uh, interact with natural modes of variability like El Nino and La Nina in uh, modulating the extreme events uh, in terms of their duration, intensity, frequency and area covered. Obviously socio-economic impacts depend on uh, how vulnerable a region is. So even within India uh, within a city like Mumbai, uh, some neighborhoods are more vulnerable than others, as I said before. Okay, so all these things are good to keep in mind as we look at this United in Science 2022 report.